Buenos Nachos, amigos, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Record Breakers Podcast, where a group of friends share music with each other, taking turns, an album at a time. I'm your man with no plan, PD Rave, here. Here with me is, of course, my crew, my team, my squad. We've got Brett. Petey doing his uh, double belt and suspenders where he'll do a countdown and then he'll do a pause and then he'll <laughs> say buenos nachos. Yes. <laughs> I love uh, it. We've got Drew. Squad goals. We, we've got Patrick. I wear my sunglasses at night so I can. So I can. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're here. Talk about music. Uh, but hey, not that music. you don't mess around with the guy in shades. Oh, no. I dare not to. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about music, uh, but not that music, but it is going to be provided by Patrick. Uh, Patrick, what do you got for us this week? Um, We're going to get uh, sort of, this is one of those albums that I probably meant to bring on, or at least artists that I meant to bring on a long time ago, but somehow never did. Khaki King and her album Junior. Mm, um, I can I can say for sure this is probably going to be a, a quick uh, expectations <laughs> segment uh, because I'm probably like myself you probably uh, didn't have much expectations I know I didn't I wasn't aware of this artist but uh, Brett what expectations did you have coming into this album well a- as a fan of the score to the Twilight film um, I no I had no clue who she was I had no idea what this was going to be I didn't even know what genre it was going to be with a name like Kaka King like and not even seeing the spelling just being told by Patrick that that's what we're going to listen to like I was like what we could get, like some hip hop so like it like I, you know it it does take place in Atlanta or it originated from Atlanta so I was like hey maybe we're going south but no uh, I I had no clue um, yeah Hotline. it was it was yeah. Atlanta, place spelled with two T's, pronounced with none. Uh, <laughs> Drew, what were your expectations coming into this album? Well, well, I've been following Khaki King since everybody loved you. No, I haven't. What? No. Um, yes, you're correct. Our our initial impressions are going to be very quick because I fucking said it was a. Pat essentially gave us it was a chick and she played guitar. So that's essentially what I went in with. I was like, oh, it, it's it's female that plays guitar. That cool. <laughs> like Let's go. <laughs> let's see what's what's up with that. Let's roll with this. Uh let's see what co- really that? shakes out. <laughs> what's up with that? Let's shake this out and see what comes out. Uh Patrick, how would you describe this album musically? So I'm going to give you a little history of Khaki King and then sort of what feeds into this album. So her first couple of records were sparsely instrumentalized. It was basically her and acoustic guitar and occasionally a couple of other people doing some stuff. She plays uh, her at least primarily as like uh, sort of finger style tapping flamenco percussive guitar stuff. Uh, that was, you know, a thing a minute ago. Not entirely unlike the band three we talked about some very long time ago on here like uh, joey eppard from three but kind of her own thing but uh basically an ovation guitar and lots of tapping um but this album was sort of her like i'm gonna put a band together and just make kind of a indie rock record and but also being like a a ludicrously talented guitar player um so uh you know this is this is a young lady or at this time i guess i'd call her a woman because she was an adult ass woman who like makes cool music uh this was sort of a big departure for her stylistically like i said everything before was primarily uh acoustic driven and uh fairly sparsely instrument you know instrumentation uh this is she just got a couple of guys to make a band and they made a record with songs Weirdly, all about Cold War and spies and shit, because that's what she was reading apparently when she wrote it. Yeah. Um, Brett, what what were the th- themes on that caught your attention? How would you describe this album musically? Well, musically, um, there there's a lady singing, um, and it's an indie rock, uh, you know, strum related. 
Um, and uh, there's a heavy reverb on stuff, and it's slightly unpolished. Uh, it's it's br- there's breathy singing, jangly guitar. Generally, it's rough around the edges. Um, and there's also this uh, finger style guitar and uh, jazzy licks um, and a synthesizer. Um, also, there are some uh, ridiculous, uh, like not only like crazy, like you know, synthesizer in an album with like you know your strum indie rock songs and your uh, your like general girl rock a la mid early mid nineties. Um, there's also like a, a, a song that there's way better drums than it. This album <laughs> was asking for, uh, and there's some bass guitar work that's uh, more impressive than you would expect on an album that could not have that stuff. Um, man, uh, there, there are this this album goes places. It does things. It, it is not like it is like a scattershot like genreless album um which was great uh um it, it does it ties things up very well but uh man like there there is some instrumentation uh that gets center stage that i did not expect when i came in expecting oh it's gonna be you know it's it's gonna be this lady she's gonna strum a guitar she's gonna sing things and, and everybody else is the professor and marianne um but no like it was it was great um and I'll, I'll break down things that I appreciated more when we get individual tracks, but like, man, uh, I came in expecting one thing and was served up another thing along with the thing I expected. So I had like a side dish and Peter, you're muted. It, it was a thing playing another thing disguised as another people. thing. Sorry. It was, it was, <laughs> yeah. What you said, Petey, <laughs> all of that, uh, Drew, what what was the theme song that caught your attention? Brett is right. This album goes places. Um, it has a lot to unpack. In it. Um, it for me overall, the album had this like very like almost soothing, calming quality to all of the guitar work. There's really great instrumentation throughout. Um, like Brett said you go into this thinking, okay, this is her. She's a guitarist and a vocalist. The guitar is going to take center stage. Um, and that's what you sort of expect. Right. I mean, she has a guitar that she got custom made, (laughs) um, for her. So obviously she cares a lot about the instrument. So you expect really good guitar work. You expect a really great guitar tone. And it had that in, spades it was great um but it was like i said it was also really like serene and calming in a lot of places um the composition work on all of the songs was really really fantastic um plus to me something that was really cool about this overall was the way they mixed the vocals and the guitar i never felt like either one was above the other in the mix. They were almost like straight level with each other, which was super weird, but with her vocal style sort of worked um, with that guitar work. Um, There was a lot of places where they sort of let it play uh, in the quiet spots, which I sort of liked. And it was something that I was just not, I was not expecting the composition work and the sort of thought uh, that obviously went behind this. I guess my brain is trained to think, oh, it's a guitar album, so it's going to be some pretty uh, easy stuff in the background and a lot of awesome guitar licks. And there was that. There was some there was some finger style guitar going on throughout this record that was pretty impressive. But there was also other stuff that like there was a depth to this record that was really, really cool to see. Yeah. Like it was, it was a, it was a cool deep album that had a lot of cool things going on to it, especially like the guitar work and the instrumentation around it. Like it was, it was cool to kind of feel and vibe with and listen to and like, uh, just like, to just bump and just play in your car, what you know, where you're driving home, like just like 
let it wash over you, you know, <laughs> like, uh, but like you could sink your teeth into it as well. And it, it was, it was really cool. I think, and really interesting musically. And I, I definitely enjoyed li- listening to it, but we'll, we'll get, let's get to the, to the tracks. Talk some of the, about the key tracks. Uh, Patrick, what would be some of the key tracks to zero in on? Um, I'll skip the record breaker thing because I'm assuming someone else will, but the first song's good. Uh, <laughs> second song, spit it back in my mouth. Um, it's really like, like the thing that I, and, and I, for me, like this album was a shock when it came out. I had listened to Khaki King for a while before this. And again, it was primarily acoustic stuff. She did occasionally like have like a full band and make like a, a song, but it was almost like, like you could just give her an acoustic guitar and she can do it all herself. That was what she did. Uh, like some of her early stuff was just guitars, very little vocals. So like, to like have this hit you as like, I just went out and made a fucking rock record coming from that was really a shock. But here you really get to see, um, you get to hear like what she does with a guitar. She is ludicrously talented, but also like kind of unique. There, there are other people who do the tappy percussive acoustic guitar thing, but you know, she has her own take on it. And I think that one's a fun song. Uh, communist friends. It's just really enjoyable. It's a song it is. It, and I like that. It's sort of like a lot of this album gets a little like she was clearly watching bond movies and reading spy novels. And like, you know, that is not typical fodder for album writing. But it, it's something different and unique and interesting, and I enjoy that it's something different. And then my favorite song of hers, period, "Falling Day," uh, the the best seven eight groove I think I can that I can think of off the top of my head. It is it's finger picked ukulele, electrified. You don't know it's a uke until you find out it's a uke, um, and it's because uh, it, it, it's in a really odd open tuning because of course it is. But uh, it's 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 most of the song is in seven, eight and it's got this super cool groove. And then when you finally get to the chorus, there's this like it's almost like a modern take on the on the wall of sound vocal style where there's just this really, really powerful growing uh, repeat of the title of Falling Day. And it's just cool. The drums are really good. And they work really well with the changing time signatures because it goes from seven eight to something resembling four four a couple of times, and it's it's just it's a song that never gets old to me. And that you know that I think is always to me a, a sign of a good song is that like you can listen to it. I mean, this album came out six or seven years ago, and I'm still like that song I've been listening to for that long and still love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brett, what will be some of the key tracks for you? Key tracks. Let me tell you about some key tracks. Uh, Webster's Dictionary defines key tracks as, um, no, spit it back in my mouth. Um, that's what Webster's Dictionary defines. Uh, so it, it's, it opens with this, like, you know, this jangle guitar melody. Then the bass and drums kick in, and it's got a pretty decent groove. Uh, I enjoyed it. The, the vocals are super reverbed out on this song, but that's it none of the instruments are so it, it has this like it doesn't feel like you're you know on the oo's because you took too many pills after getting dental work done um or you're on the horse um but uh it, it uh I, I i thought that the song had a pretty great hook um other tracks hallucinations from my poisonous german streets um i was a big fan of the hemispheres-esque rush synth that was going on in this track um it's it's you know it's like I'm breaking my fast with honeydew and drinking milk of paradise. It is that. It is the Xanadu noise. Um, but uh, I, I I I was uh, very pleased with the way the slide, the piano, and the synth all played together, doing their thing. And then like the drums decided, hey, how's it going, everybody? Let me be a drummer. Um, and uh, it like that really like every time I hear the like. I've listened to this album a lot. We've had a lot of time since last week uh, to listen to this album. <laughs> a couple and of weeks let ago. Let me tell you, point. I've heard those drums a bunch. So, uh, man. It's not and, even and last then, week in, in Record Breaker's time because we missed a week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> legit. Like, but yeah, uh, Sunnyside, uh, the, the album ends 
you know, it wraps up, you know, with lady and acoustic guitar with feelings. Um, and, uh, it fits very well at the end of the album. Um, you know, it, it, it does a good job of tying things up that, uh, on an, on an album that goes places, does things. And, uh, you know, I, I could have probably picked out a lot of different songs on this that, uh, would have been noteworthy, but, uh, those are three key tracks. Yeah. As um, defined by me. <laughs> defined by Brett Hibbard. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, Drew, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Uh, well, I guess I'm going to be the one to do the record breakers thing right now. Uh, the Betrayer. Um, finger style guitar to start it, but like it opens with just that. Um, just that little bit of guitar and sort of eases you in and fleshes out. Very cool. Um, the vocals are almost like that breathy like brett was saying i guess like that would be the best term for it like almost a whisper but not a whisper like very much not like weird but very good um they're very cool to hear there uh then i'll skip and go uh down to communist friends for some reason on communist friends the reverb on the vocals to me sounded really neat like there was just something about like because it was some crazy like almost Yo. reverb like there was an echo like it was yo your voice sounds like you were in a hallway or something <laughs> <laughs> shit was cool like like it was almost yeah that one was cool <laughs> it's hard um, to describe reverb let me tell you <laughs> yeah um yeah there there was a definite like hard echo like almost like they like the reverb almost sounded like they had her sing it and like overdub and then move it over like it was that like extreme, but it made for a really cool effect. Um, and then the single falling day, and yeah, it's to me that one is easy to point out as the oh, yeah, no, this is the one you're gonna do the single on because it is something that the song itself, like if you're just like in the background listening to stuff like come on like a radio station or whatever that's going to catch your ear that's going to be like hey like listen to me i have something to do like it's something cool um it sounded like the tones of it like the tone and the attitude of it sounded very familiar uh to me like brett said there's very much a twinge of that like girl rock to it but it is altogether different. Like it is something that is, it is hard to describe, but like it very much to me were like, if you're going to pick out like the, Hey, what should we make the music video on? Like, no, you make, yeah, you did right. <laughs> this is the correct one. Well played. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a, those are just like, it, it's it's a lot easier to pick out tracks on this one than someone it's very easy to kind of like go in and it, not zero in on tracks but to remember specific tracks that you love because it's like there's they does have a good distinction between tracks like tracks like uh like spit it back in my mouth or like falling day like like they just have they're memorable and you like you you remember the exact track that it did that thing that or had that cool sound that just like oh that 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 resonates and and that's just a really cool thing overall on this album uh but yeah those those not to expound because i think probably picks the same tracks as everybody else but like yeah i think that's the main memorable thing about the key tracks aspect of it all uh but let's bring it back around the horn to talk about some conclusive thoughts uh brett what would be your conclusion on this album my conclusion uh yeah uh this this is a pretty well-made album um it goes a lot of places that i didn't expect uh i might come back to this album um in the future i don't know i listened to it a whole bunch over the last week (laughs) uh wink wink uh there have been many many worse albums might i send you to the past episode of hulk rules which is the best worst album. This ain't Hulk rules. Somebody actually cared. (laughs) Somebody put in effort. Uh, And while I normally cringe, flinch, have a, you know, a knee jerk reaction 
when given uh, albums in this spot in the rotation. Um, this this uh, this came out pretty okay. I ain't mad. This is two in a row. Two in a row. Um. All right. Yes. Sorry, I'm distracted because I just f- uh, saw a thing that t- saying the Mega Ran is coming to Miami. You were, you were punching a monkey yes. on top of your MySpace page. Yes. Psh, psh, psh. Uh, Drew, what would be your conclusion on this album? This album hit me in a weird way. I was not. It was a hundred percent not what I was expecting, and. It's something that I was very, very... We took a little bit of time uh, getting around to this episode, and I wasn't mad about having a little bit of extra time with this record. Um, It's something that if it comes up again, if I see this, it's going to be... It's not going to be Bad Rabbits territory for me, where I'm going back to it again and again and again and again. It's not that type of album for me, but it's very much something like, you know what? I feel like just chilling back with some good headphones and listening to something cool. It's going to be that type of record for me. It's going to be in that rotation. Uh, Uh, I haven't gotten a chicken dinner. Oh, fuck you talking about. (laughs) Uh, uh, The good thing is now all of the record breakers have PUBG. (laughs) PUBG. Chicken dinner breakers. Oh my god! It'll never what you happen. Do a chicken dinner breakers. Uh, but I derailed the conversation. But yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, in conclusion, I think the the this album is just a cool, deep, fun album to just kind of like, especially if you just dig really cool guitar work. Uh, and just like if you dig like chill ambient, like that, like well, it's hard because that's a, its own genre. But like really fu- uh, interesting ambiance. Uh, uh, I could bring in some ambient, <laughs> ambient chill. That's how it's what I use. Ambient chill on Spotify is what I used to sleep. <laughs> well, by hip hop for me, but yeah, <laughs> I can dig. You can't uh, you and the rest of YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Patrick, what would be your conclusions on this album? Um, I I was kind of happy to come back to this. It's been a while since I've like listened to it heavily. Uh, she got six other records. If you enjoy this one, go listen to the rest of them. They're fantastic. Uh, I'm a big fan of of like the first four, which are very acoustic focused, but the 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 more recent ones are also pretty good. Um, and and just like you know. This is, I think, I think this is a good expand your horizons and listen to something a little different, but also familiar. Because again, it's it's still kind of indie rock, but it's 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 got its own thing going on and it plays with genres in a fun way. Yeah, and uh, you should go listen to it. If here's the thing, I picked an album and Brett enjoyed it. That means it must be good because he hates ninety <laughs> percent of what I bring. Uh, I don't know that that math checks out. I think I probably like just like well, I, I, you know, yeah, yeah. probably. I mean, I I mean that's the thing. Like, if I bring something that is good enough for even Brett to like, yeah. well, it's not know. like I'm, I'm like I can't be pleased. No, yeah. no, it's not. I just can't. I'm just not going to bring you know the rest of Rush's discography we haven't listened to. No, I brought the parts that we want to listen yeah. to. Yeah, no, there's really good moving pictures, and I, I have a soft spot for that. Damn good record, yeah. but. Like this is this is really I like really great guitar work. If you're a guitar player, go listen to everything she's ever done because you will learn something. Yeah, um, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, it's it's a, it's pretty fantastic. Um, uh, but yeah, let's transition over to our main event of the evening, our haiku reviews. Uh, as we kind of some things all some all some things up. In poetic form. Uh, get our haikus. Um, let's start with Brett. Brett, what is your haiku? More than a strummer. She's more than a singer. Wrote the Twilight score. <laughs> hey, don't, don't hold that against her. Uh, hey, but that pays the bill. She, she wrote the score, not the book. Exactly. Okay. Exactly, people. 
do try that's, their best. That's probably a good royalty check. I would probably oh imagine that that's See, so. So along those check. lines, just to interrupt, the way I first found her, there was a movie in the mid two thousands, a movie I've never even seen called August Rush, about some kid playing tappy guitar. They couldn't get a twelve year old who could do that, but what they could get is a tiny five foot tall woman <laughs> to wear a hoodie and play the guitar parts, and all nice. the close ups are her playing. Nice. Uh, I thought you were going to say you were watching Twilight. <laughs> no, I have, I have I never seen Twilight, and I have no to intention. to not be surprised. I've, uh, I will say I've seen Twilight, uh, but only because of Rift Tracks. <laughs> hey, you got the good dose of Anna Kendrick. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but let's move on with the segment we're doing. Drew! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so lost. Um, what did you hack? Some, something new to me. A depth of composition, really damn solid. Yeah. Uh, okay, my haiku right now: uh, nifty guitar work with a cool ambient sound. I was feeling it. Uh, Patrick, what is your haiku? Major transition. Khaki King goes electric. Works pretty damn well. Boogie woogie woogie woogie. Uh, yes. Those are our haikus. Those are our thoughts on Khaki Kings Jr. You can, of course, find that on our Spotify playlist. Uh, play Record Breakers, the home game. Play along at home. Do your homework. On that Spotify playlist will be next week's record. Uh, and that will be provided by Brett. Brett, what do you got for us next week? Uh, we're we're going to go visit an old friend. I'm bringing yet another Rush album. No, uh, we're going to listen to uh, the the self-titled album by the presidents of the United States of America. Yes. The one with all the of hits. them. Yes. <laughs> the one with all the songs that, uh, you know. Uh, Except for that other album that had the other songs. But yeah, it's, that's it's, true. it's the one. It's, it's the one that if you were in fifth grade and it came out, the, it, it made total sense to you. Exactly. And then if you were 18 and doing drugs, it made all the sense to you. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. So that will be next week. But that's next week. And this is this week. And you can, of course, find us all over the internet. Patrick is at Swagger. Brett is at Hey Beat Ribbert, H-I-B-B-I-T-Y-B-I-P-B-A-R-D. Drew is at x for X. I'm at PD Rave. The show's four record breakers. That's the number four record breakers. Recordbreakerspodcast.com. Recordbreakerspodcast at gmail.com. If you want to email us, rebelli.net for listening to the shows. Rebelli TV on YouTube and on Twitch. Do all the things. Until next time. Hasta los huevos. To the loo. To the loo the clue. Doom, 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 doom. Sweat. Sweat, baby, sweat. Got going like a turbo, but. You know.